Welcome to yet another G.I. Joe classified ranking and review. It's Trav Moody here to talk about the retros. They are classified figures, but they're under the retro series. Today we got Rakondo, Duke, and Scarlet. Little mini reviews with a ranking. And you're not going to be shocked by the number three choice. Yeah, it's Rakondo. Now don't get me wrong, we would have been a lot more excited for Rakondo had the OG version come out first. The Tiger Force version is pretty good. I mean, if you're okay with the stripes on the legs and everything, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of differences. A lot of darkened facial hair features. It looks like he has a slightly darker tan on the skin, but it's essentially, it, it is a repaint. It's not essentially a repaint. It is a repaint. We got a little lighter brown. So they kind of mixed and matched colors here. As you can see, a uh, web holster there looks nearly the same. Looks probably a shade darker on the right, but that could be the color it bounces off on the beige outfit. But pretty pretty one-to-one, a -one, little less glossy, of course, with the black on the Night Force meets Tiger Force version, if you will. Um, one thing I want to get out of the way first is Homeboy's Wobbly. And I don't know if I noticed that on the original... I don't know. Let's see. Do the wobble. Yeah, the one on the right is far more wobbly. This one still has it, but I definitely didn't notice on the Tiger Force version. And take a look at the back. So yeah, same same deal. Same deal on the holster. It looks pretty much one-to-one -one in the color. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. But it does look like a a shade. I don't know, it's darker, it's hard to explain. The browns are different, as you can see, but not much different. So, you got that. More, one's, the one on the left's more like an oak brown. The other one on the right's pretty much just brown. Like as brown as brown can get. We're looking at the boots here, different color shading, got the black and that brown, and then that oak brown. It's almost got like a hint of OD, you know, and kind of a more reddish on the boots. We got Daniel LeClaire's cap. Not much different there. I don't know where this red paint stripe came from. So there's a, could be just from playthrough. Could have came like that. I never reviewed it. So who knows? But uh, you got that. You got the pin there holding up the uh, side of his jungle infantry hat. Is it just me or is these hats extremely like loose on here no matter what i do that's i don't know it doesn't seem move it yeah they're really loose i don't know like i have it on wrong i don't remember it being this bad but it is on the other one it's just as loose on the other one too so maybe you need a little bit of blue tack or something like that there's a look at a rucksack pretty much the same got more of a an olive drab on the right with the brown and then i told you about that oak brown yeah, darker forest green on the left. Got our hunting knife and rifle taped up. Yep, it is. It's the same. I think the green pops a little more with the cream white bandage. I do like this green for Rakondo on the weapons. Unless we forget our little pistols that we never use. And so before we give Rakondo his gear all geared up, I figured I'd have a little bit of fun and switch the accessories. And you know what? It looks pretty cool, right? It looks probably a little tad weird. He's got this like navy violet type cap with this very light beige outfit. But the Tiger Force one looks really cool. If you're okay with mashing up the different greens, they're the lighter greens. We'll take a look at the back. And uh, yeah, he's real wobbly. Yeah, I don't have that problem with this one. So that's a major bummer. I don't I don't know why it's uh the tooling is worse. And 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 I know I'm not the only review. I mean, Lord knows these have been reviewed to death for the last three weeks. But I know a lot of people are having problems with Rakondo on that ball joint in the middle. And before I do a normal comparison, I gave Rakondo this hunting rifle designated for Rakondo from Gridiron Studios. Finally, we got Rakondo here with his Tiger Force counterpart. And, uh, you know, he's cool, but had this Rakondo come out first, 
it's the whole bazooka deal. It's the whole out, I, Outback was the exception just because that gray beard made him look like Solid Snake and everything. He sold completely different. But with the bazooka and Rakondo thing, getting the Tiger Force versions first definitely detracted away from the figure. They were both great figures in their own right. But Rakondo, at the end of the day, is a very subtle, very simple figure being the Jungle Trooper. He's just blending in. And that's kind of what he does here. He's just going to blend in on your shelf. He's fine. I think the Tiger Force version's kind of better. I mean, it's just let we don't have the wobbliness. I think the stripes were well done. I like the different changes they made, the navy cap and everything. Overall, I mean, he's just fine, but very bland. I'm gonna have to go three and a half out of five for Rakondo at the number three spot on this ranking video. All right, this is when we get into the exciting stuff. We got Shane O'Hara here. Scarlet coming in at number two. This was a tough choice between number two and number one. Um, yeah, short ranking video, so <laughs> not much suspense here. But I love this Scarlet. I really dig her. I love the changes they made and whatnot. I think in hand, she isn't as great as I thought she would be. But that said, she's still spectacular and splendid. I love a lot of what they did. Of course, the articulation is super updated. Not sure why I have a white blemish there. I opened the wrong one. I was looking at the cart stock. Actually, that's a great question. Are you more worried about the condition of the card stock or are you looking at the figure? So the first thing I do is actually look at the face. And I thought this one had more of red blush under her right eye you know, her left eye, our rice view, than the one in the cardstock, but the other cardstock was not as in great condition. So I kind of went with that change. But now that I see it in hand, I think it's fine. I think it was the lighting. But this is a really nice face. Now, she does look a little anime compared to what we had before. And this is the updated version. Uh, strangely enough, I did not have the updated version of Duke or Roblox. I only went with Scarlet because I thought the original Scarlet face was terrible. In fact, I think I threw it away. I don't even know where it is. It's somewhere. It's in a box, crate, bin. And I still replaced my Scarlet with the Samara weaving head sculpt. As you can see, the neck is a little long because unfortunately they had different neck pegs and I really hate that. I mean, it's a movie line. I guess they didn't want people messing with the likenesses or whatever. And it took a boil and pop. I don't understand why they're not universal. I don't understand why they're not universal with Marvel Legends. I mean, Star Wars is a slightly different scale, so I get that. But yeah, just crazy. So I'm not able to really even use this movie body anymore, which is a shame. It's pretty cool. Um, so this is the updated look of Scarlet on the right and the classified Scarlet. And we have that comparison there. I, I mean, I think this face is still better. But for retro reasons, looking back at the 80s, I wouldn't use this one, right? It looks too modern. This this kind of fits the bill. This reminds me a lot of the kind of classic Marvel Legends heads. Let's see if we can actually do some swaps, and I'll be right back. And we got Mary Jane Face. She's uh, been through some stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I keep these in a bag with other parts, and over the years, they've just gotten uh, blushed up. And I'm not Tony's figs, I'm not a painter, but that actually looks pretty great. Maybe a little big, you know, um, the blemishes don't look good, but painted up. That looks good, but is it better than this one, though? And we'll get the hair on that. I don't know. I gotta go with what they've done. I think they did a spectacular job, and obviously her eyes are blue, so we gotta be consistent there. All right, so now, wow, you know what? This scarlet face looks so much better now. <laughs> With this body, right? With this retro body, this looks pretty damn good. Yeah, the the earrings are a little off, but they did a great job updating it. It's kind of kooky that I haven't been able to use this because of the what happened with the, the movie uh, body not getting the same neck and whatnot. But no, that's good. Let's get a little comparison there. We'll throw her we'll throw her hair back in a little bit, but fuller lips. Wow, well, okay, they're they're. You know, they're giving her more of a feminine look on the right. Uh, Makeup-wise, a little addition on the right. But no, it looks good. It looks like this is kind of like, what, like a Resolute Scarlet or something? I don't know. Not too bad. And now we have ourselves a Black Widow version of Scarlet. And this, this might take the cake. Even the skin tone is close enough. I mean, no one's really going to look. I mean, it's, it's close enough. Wow. This might be hard to top. 
Love the hairstyle. Oh, what do you guys think? A little more makeup on the right? Give credit to Hasbro for stepping up, making her feminine. But she does have those eyes that are a little animated, which, you know, is my style. But this is, this is nice. I mean, obviously, this reflects the card back. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This is fun. I mean, either way, you can't go wrong. They all look like fantastic Scarlets to me. And like I was telling you guys with the movie Samara weaving, yeah, the movie, the, just all the movie head sculpts are all messed up. None of them are universal. They fit on. Maybe it's proprietary things or stuff we just don't know about, but you can ask Lenny that someday. But yeah, unfortunately, this would, this would, this would probably be the winner, right? It's just look awesome. If you want an updated classified Scarlet with the retro look, the retro uh, digs, yeah, it's just a shame. It doesn't fit on. Taking a look at the ponytails, you get one darker and one lighter, which is interesting. Maybe to suppress movement, but you figured movement would be lighter. But yeah, I don't know. This one's a darker red, which is cool. Gives her a different look. Obviously, this is in action. This is regular. And that'll squeeze in right there. This was really brilliant. And nice idea. Just smart. And this is the, the regular tail. And we've got that other ponytail. More of one in more of one of action. It articulates around. You might have to pop it out, pop it back in. But you can kind of put it any which way you want. It's probably want the key here is to get it out of the way of the backpack. Military grade. Same as the Valkyrie that's on the right. The good news is this fits really snug. Much better than Rakondo. Of course, Rakondo's, that's, that's an old Joe. This fits really nice. Details, great, fantastic. So you can put this. Stick that in there. And there you go. So, all she's all ready to go. And now if you want to, you're concerned about the straight look. You don't want the wavy. But the color, you want the color to stay the same as her hair still fits across and like i said you can move it up down that's you know an action you don't like it like that it's still gonna fit over the backpack which is good news to just snug that in there but yeah there you go cool i probably prefer the other one because then it doesn't ride on top of the sack <laughs> so yeah she's she looks fantastic got her a holster there the quiver and we'll get into those crossbow bolts. You've got our Arashikage type uh, ninja stars there on the right. Um, looking nice. Got the flash can. The padding right there and the ridging. So it's really, really great mold here. Great sculpt. Got the boots. This time we have a holster. Of course, the OG just had the blade there. And while we're at it. Let's just put the knife in. Knife is plain, it's green. It's got a little bit of a blade to it. Not much uh, gloss on this on the silver. You can't tell it's metallic. It's pretty bland. Look like, like a brown. So a little bit of a rump action. They're not afraid to do that anymore <laughs> compared to what well, you can't see here. But eh, I guess not too bad. It's probably similar. Look at enough guys butts on this show why not look at a a gals oh that'll get me in trouble and i love it there's a hidden pistol there <laughs> not so hidden but it was hidden to me damn it uh right on her inner wrist gauntlet thing the jig but yeah she's just i don't know she's out of this world let's throw in the bolts kind of weird how they go in so that is that is about as good as I can get getting all the arrows in the quiver. They don't all fit down. So it's probably best to leave one out. And so I just noticed one's got a smaller... Oh, they all got different edges. I didn't even realize that. So one's longer, one's normal, one's smaller. Oh, okay, real cool. So they're all different, actually. That's interesting. Okay, get that one in. See, it kind of pushes that one over, if you will. They all kind of bunch up. So if you want to leave one on the bow, it's probably your best bet. 
And she also has these punchy hands. Ah, she comes with way too many accessories for you to care about these. You've got this flimsy ass crossbow. I don't know if it's new. I don't know if it's from the old one. I can't find the old one. So let me know in the comments. Help the algorithm. Uh, you'll get it to line up and match up. And the bolts fit right in, which is cool. So that's that makes me think this is new. So we'll take this funky looking one. Sorry about the blur and all that artwork in the back. It's going to do that to you. But, uh, oh man. So this is, yeah, this is just flimsy. Not the greatest when it comes to functionality. You guys all wanted me to say that, didn't you? All right, we get that back and boom. Oh, I don't know. And this one's weird because of the... Ah, I have it on backwards. Someone would have told me that in the comments and now I'm going to ruin the algorithm by fixing my own mistakes. I should purposely make mistakes. Get into our accessories for Shayna. I like this color. I like this color, this like beigey OD green. You got Mutt and Grunt's modified M16s there. So yeah, just adding that little extra brown on the butt of the gun really helps. We got the XMLR 3A. Of course, Scarlet's on the left with that nice brown on the gun butt. And that's Dukes at the top, who's our number one pick. Duh, spoiler alert, he's coming next. And then we got Grunts in the middle. And we got Shayna's pistol there. That's a really nice pistol compared to some of the stuff, some stuff we've gotten recently. So I really love the brown paint. Just adding a touch of paint there, Tony. Uh, definitely helps on the weapons. You can see all the detail. It looks really nice. So let's put that pistol, mm, mm, mm. something I just noticed with Scarlet is that she does have the earring. It's crazy that I just noticed that, but yeah, it does have the earrings right to left, but they're not as pronounced. They don't look as escape punky or anything like that. I think they look great. And as you can see, the guns. The rifles will fit on the backpack, as will the crossbow. So that's excellent news there. And uh, yeah, and you can even leave on one of the bolts. Hasn't fell yet. And I've got this cool looking gridiron scar. I think this is the perfect weapon for Scarlet. It's massive, but it's G.I. Joe. It's supposed to be freaking crazy, right? But it looks great. But the guns do look great on her. So you don't, you don't have to go third party. She comes with a thousand weapons. Compared to Rakondo, compared to Anakin Skywalker, and so forth. Another thing I'm just discovering here in the Scarlet is that there's actually a hole on her diaper, toy term, that you can plug in this harness, which is really... Maybe they've seen the reviews of how... Oh, the functionality. But yeah, this is nice. This really keeps that on. I've had slight issues with this. This would have been nice to have a lower gun holster. I know they're trying to stay faithful to the OG, and sometimes you got to make sacrifices with functionality there, but she's great. She's great. I'm going to go four and a half whiskeys for Shayna O'Hara, Scarlet. She's fantastic. She's fully loaded. Look at this. She's just fully stocked. If, as long as you got the pistol in her hand, <laughs> you could have everything on her person, if you will, but she's absolutely fantastic if you rank her number one i won't argue i won't but that said throw it in the comments let me know your top three gi joe classified retro of this wave that said we still got to get to number one let's get this one out of the way first i am not a duke guy i'm not a bobby hurley guy i'm not a christian leitner guy a grant hill guy i'm not even a north carolina guy you know i love michael jordan you know whatnot but Georgetown, Patrick Ewing, Allen Iverson, I'm not that either. But I am a Flint guy, because Flint, Michigan, you know, I know, Ann Arbor, I'm a go blue guy. I'm a Michigan guy. But anyway, we're talking about Conrad Hauser. I am a Conrad Hauser guy, and this is the guy right here. This is the perfect Duke. I love everything about it. We'll do some comparisons, of course, but he's got a fantastic airborne insignia there united states all those people said oh you get the flag backwards now nah, that's how they wear it folks uh awesome 
bandolier. We'll, we'll show some tricks and trades with some stuff later. Got a nice uh, grenade there. But this face sculpt is, this is Duke. This is the Duke we know. It's an amalgamation of the comic and the cartoon and everything else you wanted, the, the OG toy. It, it's just nice. And the thing is, the OG, OG, OG classified Duke face, and I know this is a Tiger Force, but looking at the face sculpt, it's pretty good, right? It's pretty good. They even kind of filled his hair in there for Tiger Force, and I like what they did there. But at the end of the day, I mean, you might like the one on the right. I'm going to stick with the one on the left. This is my Duke, you know. Might not be your Duke, but it's my Duke. This is the Duke. He looks awesome. He looks awesome. As simple as he does, he looks great. Um, not not going with a whole lot of patches. They're sticking to the OG. But yeah, just fantastic. I'm not sure what's up with all this this paint stuff I got going on, all my figures. It looks like I cracked open the wrong one. So like I said, I asked before, do you guys prefer it to look better in the card behind me? Or do you look? Uh, would you rather have the more fantastic one in your hand? I'm, I'm interested because some people might well, well, to sacrifice a figure and a play with for the one that's gonna, you know, be immortal on my wall forever. And we're looking at the buck here. Duke is all new on the legs, and we have a figure coming out fairly soon, I would think. The Walmart Collector Con Night Force Shockwave actually doesn't use Shockwave's legs; it uses this one. It's heavily disguised with that camera pattern. But yeah, that's the figure we're getting uh, with these legs. I'm not sh exactly sure about the upper torso. It feels like it's all new since it's butterfly and pinless and everything. He's super jacked, so really great there. I'm looking at the OG Duke. He's got that uh, Operation Blackout, that futuristic gold shin guard <laughs> look there. And, uh, yeah, what an improvement. So, yeah, different. Let's see if the upper the upper torso is obviously different because we've got pins. So, even if it's the same aesthetic. And, uh, as you can see, the bandolier is is pretty similar. It, it loses the Joe Pro, which a lot of people dug. But, as you can see, it's fairly similar in the pockets there. They up, upgraded the insignia. You know, the shoulder padding is different. It's just, it's just different. You know, it's very, it's similar, obviously, because this was a homage to Duke at the time, but just different arms, different everything. Fine, I'll show the fisties. Scarlet has a nice stance because she's part ninja. Conrad's just a weirdo, a big ass jock white boy. So he's fighting like one, one that's had one too many Red Bull and vodkas, but there's the punchy hands. They look cool, and I'm glad that we're starting to get extra hands. Of course, we got a million with Quick Kick, and now we're getting some in the retro line as well. Hopping on a more of Conrad's accessories here. We'll start with the helmet and visor, the classic retro-looking helmet. Fits on nice and snug, and it looks fantastic. Whether you pull the visor down or you leave it up. It looks great. Obviously, this is going to be future-proofing for Starduster, which they did name-only announce. So, looks great all the way around. We'll give them some different options here. We'll go with Grunt's ACH, and that looks really good, actually. That looks excellent, and it matches the the web gear there, so look looking real good. And then we'll throw on Gridiron, a more rustic helmet. So, you could tell it's 3D printed, right, but it looks good. Got some nice uh, detail. Looks battle worn a little bit, so doesn't quite match the green of the of the bandolier, but maybe a touch oversized. All right, we've got these binoculars. They swoop right over there, and it's not bad, right? But I was thinking this. You slip this underneath, and you want to make this all tight. Now, now it doesn't make sense logically. But it really tightens up that bandolier on him. And it looks pretty cool. Or ridiculous. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. But it just, it it works. Because, you know, we don't have the whole ton of rat thing. Where there's 9 million things going on. And, and it's flimsy. And eh, whatever. Your mileage will vary. You've got the backpack with the shovel. It's cool. They added, you know, special lyrics from the show. Really cool there. You've all seen it. So mine has a green little blotch, and then I look at the retro-carded one I have there behind me, and it's not there. It actually looks interesting. I'm not mad at it, but 
kind of crazy. We're having those QC paint issues still from the factory. But of course, you get the OG Duke in the middle and then uh, Airborne's on the right. The hole in the back of the bandolier. Just sneak on that backpack. And it's pretty snug. Pretty snug there. Good deal. You look sharp. Got our pistol and our knife. Three tone on the knife. Got the gold embossed on the bottom. Nice silver shiny. So maybe just because Scarlet has so many different accessories, there's, there's where the money went to. So I dig it. And unlike Scarlet, you can fit the pistol. He's got a holster there. And he's even got one on the ankle for the knife. Of course, like I said, they're going to stay pretty faithful to the OGs. I don't have the OGs, so shout out to like Punk with Toys. Check out his reviews. He kind of compares the OG figs. I usually just get my shots from 3D Joe's, but looks good there. Everything looks good. I dig the black gun only, and I get like the rest of his weapons are, you know, at OD green and whatnot. I dig the black because then it it matches the binoculars and the grenade and some of these other paint pieces that we got on the backpack and so forth. Now the XMLR, you saw me compare it earlier with Scarlet's. Now there is no place to put it actually. So use it or lose it. We've got our M32 pulverizer that we had with Stalker. Nice little green there. Um, you could use the black one if you've got Stalker and that that's cool right there. Um, not to confuse it with what people call them, the greaser gun, it's that KEDRB submachine gun that we have with Firefly and then recently with Airborne. And those who forgot, it, the mag does come off of the M32. At the end of the day, this is the Duke. I can't say we, because I'm seeing people step up for the original classified, but this is the Duke I've always wanted, and I like the other Duke, but he was, you know, 7 out of 10, 3.5 whiskey. Oh, I really want to give this a perfect 5, but not being able to attach the two rifles to his backpack, I know, it would have been extra tooling cost. I'll be nice. 4.75-5 out of 5, it's the most nitpicky complaint in the world. No notes. I mean, I just had plenty of notes, but he's perfect. He's damn near perfect. I love this Conrad Hauser, first sergeant. He's amazing. And yeah. Funny, but I almost forgot to talk about this cardstock. And it's obviously much thicker than what we had with the Walmart version. Everyone blame Walmart and they suck. But the major issue we got is not getting the white border that we see here with our Cobra Commander that came with the Hiss. We're still getting the same layout as we had with the, the flimsy versions. But finding a mint one in this is a, is a disaster compared to this. You could order from Amazon, they'll throw it in a bag, and you'll still get it pretty much mint. So, well done, Hasbro listening. It's too bad you didn't go all the way with the white border. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching Moody's recent ranking of the retro classified figs. We've all got to agree these are pretty fantastic figures. I mean, that Rakondo is perfect, and I only gave it a three and a half out of five because it's a, it's a repaint. It's the same thing. This is the Rakondo we needed. Scarlet is just great. Uh, you know, the eyes are a little off, maybe compared to how she looked before. I dig them. I think she's hot. I think she's pretty. She looks good. The buck is fantastic. The, you know, the flexibility and the articulation, the posability, everything she has, all those accessories, zillions of them are just great. But this Duke, this is the Duke and he's, he's the, he's the face. I mean, Snake Eyes, Scarlet, Roadblock, they're all there, but Duke at the end of the day, he's the Captain America of G.I. Joe. And this is an absolute terrific representation of Duke. Um, and like I said, other than not being able to keep everything on his person, he's pretty much perfect. But at the end of the day, I loved all of these. You guys know every Wednesday at Toy Con and Mood is there, 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern. The turnout has been fantastic weekend and week out. Even when we don't even talk about Joe, we've got tons of action and lots of comments and people checking in. So really appreciate that. So go give us a like, subscribe, check out the channel, check out our back content, and we'll catch you all next time in the Twile. Yo, Joe! Hello.